South Africa's winelands are world-renowned, but let's be honest, how many of us truly know the difference between a cheeky cap serve and a fruity Merlot? No, access to the elite club of wine connoisseurs is reserved only for those with the most complex of palates, like the two remarkable people you're about to meet. Here's Claire. This is a story about wine, at least in part. It's also a story about two refugees, about desperation, perseverance, and ultimately triumph. To tell it, we must start in Zimbabwe. In 2009, Zimbabwe was on the brink. Political turmoil and economic hardship saw anger spilling into the streets, with a predictable and often ruthless response from the government. Hunger was widespread. That short period of time, Zimbabwe was going through a crisis in terms of there was no food on the shelves. I mean, there was literally nothing. So there came really a time whereby I realized that it's really pointless really to be stuck in Zim. Then, 28 and working at a cement factory, Joseph Dafana faced a stark choice, live with growing uncertainty or flee. Like thousands of others, he crossed into South Africa with just the clothes on his back. I arrived in Musina, then I went straight to the refugee camp. Then I stayed there for almost two weeks up until I was granted asylum, which was to work and study in South Africa. When you came to South Africa, did you have a plan? Did you come to a job? I came down to Joburg and I lived in a Methodist church. So, so ladies were allowed to sleep in the church and Jane's could actually sleep on the streets. So I slept on the streets of Joburg for about two weeks. Where so, were you getting food? From bins, where were you getting food? I could actually get food from the streets. And I could wait up until I'm super hungry. Then I would just eat without even looking what's in my plate. It's a struggle Tinashe Nyamudoka knows too well. Like Joseph, he had a job but chose to leave when he saw the writing on the wall. I was working in a supermarket. I was actually a junior manager and I saw firsthand how the shelves were empty, you know. But you had money, but you didn't have anything to buy with it. Tinashe made his way to Cape Town, where he hoped to work in a supermarket. Obviously, you realize you don't have the documentation required. Second of all, there weren't positions for black people like me in, in those supermarkets. So I think that was a bit of a reality check that sometimes the grass seems greener across, but it's really tough. He eventually got a job in a bakery and then in a restaurant. So you say you got into restaurants. What were you doing in your first restaurant gig here in South Africa? I just got employed because they were looking for non-experienced people. Joseph's search for work was more difficult. After weeks on Joburg streets, he made his way to the Western Cape, settling in the Winelands town of Ribic Castile, where he lived in this shack. It was a move that would dramatically change his fortunes. This is where Joseph first started working in Ribic Castile as a gardener on this property. But it didn't take him long to move to a restaurant where he first worked as a barman, then a waiter. Now, you're gonna have to understand that Joseph is a rural boy. Joseph doesn't even know a single easy cocktail. I don't come from a background where wine was made. Wine wasn't a thing. His parents were strict Pentecostal Christians who frowned on alcohol. As a 29-year-old, Joseph was to have his first taste. So 2010, still as a barman, that's when I tried my very first sip of wine. And how was it? And I didn't like it. <laughs> but not only did he grow to like it, wine came to define who he was. What piqued your interest about the wine in particular, that there's more to understand in that world of wine? W wine is a language. I take it as a language. It's a universal language. It was a language Joseph wanted to learn. He studied wine and all its complexities and set out on a mammoth expedition to learn from the experts. In 2014, I drove 10,000 kilometers in less than three months, I think, like just visiting vineyards. So wow. that also helped me to polish my palate. It was time well spent. He was told by those in the know that his palate was one of the best in the country. And in the world of wine connoisseurs, that's a crucial attribute. Mind blown, because a sophisticated palate is a rare skill. The talent might be there, you know, it's like a game of football. But then if you don't practice, you cannot have match fitness. 
Meanwhile, Tanashi was building a reputation as a wine connoisseur himself. Not satisfied with just being a waiter who knew his grapes, he dreamt of being an expert, a sommelier, in a fine dining restaurant. Like Joseph, it would require a complex palate, the ability to appreciate wine on a completely different level. At what point do you realize that my palate is, you know, quite yeah, sophisticated? It's, it's, that's a progression, you know. Wine is about passion and, and how you explain it, how you understand it, how you decipher it to someone who really doesn't understand wine. And I think that was my greatest gift, like I'm a good wine communicator. Tinashe was now learning from some of the country's best chefs, like the Test Kitchen's Luke Dale Roberts, pairing individual dishes with different wines to enhance the flavor of both. My first impression was, this guy is a gentle character. Um, he's, he's humble, but more than that, he's passionate about wine. We've done everything from like taste wines together, share experiences. We've worked in tandem and it's always like such a pleasure. But what I love about it is making you want to go for the second bite. Absolutely. Like to come up with this wine and food combinations that, and at some time it was like, Tinashe, this is really thought provoking. How do you think of this? And it all made a whole difference in, in the test kitchen. The challenge Tinashe faced when studying wine was associating it with European fruits like black currant and quince that had little connection to where he grew up in his home country, Zimbabwe. Understanding wine on this level means recognizing the characteristics it inherits from the very soil in which the vines grow. It's a rare skill. For me, when I smelled wine, it took me back home. Like all those, you know, local indigenous fruits like majanje, maroro that I grew up eating and I would pick up in wine. So that's how you associate wine. So wine is about association. Their love of wine would bring Tinashe and Joseph together. Two Zimbabweans united by a shared history as refugees. Their destination forever changed by the small bunches of fruit growing on vines on the farmlands of their new home. In 2017, they joined two of their countrymen in becoming the first all-black team of Zimbabweans to compete in the World Blind Wine Tasting Competition. Joseph was captain. Donkeys, you know, so there is a time when I just want to pick like sweet donkey, you know. Like cow dung, I pick all those things, you know, so, yeah, mainly red wine. A sweaty donkey might not be the bouquet most of us expect from our wine, but it's a level of appreciation you'd expect from someone now making his own. At what point did you then realize you could produce your own wine? I believe that we have different talents. I just thought that the best way of telling my story is through a bottle of wine. My story is bottled in that bottle of Mossi. And I'm going with this Kumosha Sauvignon Blanc, and I, I so happened to make it as well. So Tinashe, like Joseph, them. wanted to create his own brand of wine. I wanted a wine brand that would embrace my Africanness, my culture. And so he called it Kumosha, meaning home, roots. And there's additional symbolism for Tinashe, whose past roots are now firmly intertwined with those of the present in his new home, South Africa. I want to believe that now I'm contributing to the larger economy because when I export my wines, it's, it's not Zimbabwean wine, it's, it's brand South Africa. Joseph's journey, despite all he's achieved, remains incomplete. Apart from knowing Joseph as a sommelier, knowing Joseph as a winemaker, I, I'm huge in giving back to the community. I don't think I'm halfway through to be where I want to be. I really feel that I should actually like found a foundation whereby I can be able to assist the little Josephs. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.